guys can take a seat. So, <clears throat> how do you pray for Hope College? This is the question that's been on my mind recently. Perhaps it's been on yours. How do you pray for this place? Maybe for you it's your family. How do you pray for your siblings? Maybe it's the news headlines. How do you pray for our world, for our country? Or maybe it's your future. How do you pray for your future? How do we pray? Maybe I could just stop there. How do we pray? What does it mean to say, I'll pray for you? Or, give me a few days, I want to pray about it. Or, as we have seen more often than I want to recently, what does it mean to say our thoughts and our prayers are with them? What does it mean to pray? This is a serious question about a foundational pillar in our Christian faith. As always, my first instinct is always to turn to Scripture. What does the Bible teach us about prayer? I think the Bible teaches us that sometimes God works in supernatural ways in prayer. God is God, after all. Moses prayed, and the sea literally split in two so that the Israelites could walk across on dry land. The disciples prayed, and people were literally raised to life from the dead. Illnesses were literally cured. The lame could literally walk. Jesus prayed, and God really brought salvation to the whole world. And God answers prayers sometimes in a way that only God can, right? in ways that are above and beyond our human knowledge, our human understanding, our human nature. God answers prayers sometimes in supernatural ways. But I think the Bible teaches us also that God works in prayer in natural ways sometimes, in human ways, in the people and the places and the situations around us. In Genesis, we read about a famine in the land. And Joseph's siblings prayed for food because they were nearing starvation. And because Joseph had stored up plenty of food in the years previous, he shared his food with his siblings and his family's prayers were answered. They were answered through Joseph's ability to listen to God, to use his intellect and his leadership, and Joseph was able to be the answer to his family's prayers. Or the men and the women in the early church, they prayed for the church to grow. They said, God, grow this community. And the scriptures tell us that the church was multiplied by the thousands Because these teachers and apostles went out and they shared the good news in word and deed with all those around them. They worked tirelessly to spread the gospel as they prayed ceaselessly for the church to grow. And so God used that to answer prayer. We pray with our hearts in the quiet of our room or with a small group of friends, or in the pews on a Sunday. We pray with words that are genuine and honest and thoughtful. But if the Bible teaches me anything about prayer, it's this. Prayer has to be more than just words. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18 says this. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstance, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Did you catch that? Pray without ceasing. Meaning, not 
constantly walk around mumbling or journaling 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that would be impossible, right? Like we have to eat and sleep sometimes too. But pray without ceasing, meaning constantly use your life to live out your prayer. Let our actions every day ceaselessly embody the things that we pray about. It's not just offering a glib, I'll pray for you, to someone who's suffering. It's about praying for that person with words and then thinking about how to live out that prayer for that person. It's not just about posting our thoughts and our prayers are with them. It's about figuring out how does God need me to act on this prayer It's not just about praying for God to put an end to suffering or oppression. It's about living out that prayer with your life. Yes, pray with words. But if we are to pray without ceasing, that means we have to do more than just pray with our words. So we want to give you a few minutes tonight to think about prayer. Of course, we're praying when we're singing, but we want to take a few minutes tonight to sit here and think about prayer with one another. Maybe you're a person that prays all the time, and you're like, great. Maybe you're a person that doesn't, and you're like, oh my gosh. We want to give you, regardless, we want to give you tonight a few minutes to pray with the people that are sitting next to you about whatever you feel led, about what's going on in your life or your family's life to pray about the world or our campus or Thanksgiving or finals or whatever. And if you have no idea where to start, you're thinking, Lauren, I have no idea where to start right now. If that's you, I want you to look in front of you. There's a black Bible. And if you open it up to page 787, which is Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 9, it's got the Lord's Prayer written out. And I couldn't think of a better place to start because that is what Jesus said. If you want to know how to pray, start with this prayer. So read that prayer out loud. Rephrase it with the person sitting next to you. Say it in your own words. Read those words with whatever's on your mind uh, as the lens to view it. Use the Lord's Prayer if you don't know where to start. But you'll also notice that when you walked in tonight, you should have gotten an orange card with someone's name on it. Go ahead, raise those up if you've got your orange card. I see some of them, great. These names are some of the faculty and staff that work here at Hope College, and so I want to invite now Dan and Mallory up to explain one of the ways they think that you could pray tonight. Hi guys, I'm Mallory, I'm a senior here. Danny, I'm a freshman. Um, we were both in Doug Ruck's leadership class this first half of the semester, and we have the opportunity in that class to be a part of something called the Change Hope Project. So we were put in a group with um, our partners, Zach Koska, Sarah Prager, and Brett Slayton, and we came up with an idea that we want you guys to help us out with. Um, so every year, if you didn't know, faculty and staff get a little card just like the one you guys have. It actually has students' names on them, four or five students' names on them. So every year faculty and staff is actually praying for all of you guys by name. So last um, year, one of my good friends, Allison Rich, found this out and thought it would be pretty cool if we as student body also prayed for our faculty and staff because they serve us so much. So we wanted to kind of keep that tradition going. So that was our Change Hope project this year. So all of you guys should have your orange card. And if you don't, raise your hand. I have some people running around passing them out. Or if you want to grab one for a roommate or friend or anything. But um, we just want you guys to join us in praying for those people by name. So put it somewhere you'll see it. Put it in your wallet, in your car, on your desk, anywhere. And um, just try to pray for that person by name. Be intentional about it. Even send them an email or something like that if you want to ask for um, something to pray about. But we are just hoping that you guys can join us in doing that. Awesome. Um, Some verses that go along with that. Uh, Mark 11, 24. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer... Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Um, another one, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will reveal their land. So, like, the heartbeat of our group and the structure of our group was all about the power of prayer. Um, in my life, like, 
just recently when I was assigned this um, as a group, I was really convicted. Just prayer, it wasn't, I wasn't um, intertwined or relating with God at all. And I was missing that. And so it was just really great to just be able to sit with my creator and sit with the one who made me to be me and just relax in that and just pray and just think with him. Um, so this is a great opportunity, this Change Hope Project, to be intentional. Um, Hope College, is the, this is a family. Um, it's not just a family of students. It's a family of faculty inter- intertwined with students. It's a chance to grow together. It's a chance to build the kingdom of God together. Because um, that's what it's all about. It's about just giving the glory to God. So, um, yeah, this is a great opportunity. Um, and one thing before you pray, I was really called, God was calling me to say this. Um, before you pray, uh, like, God was telling me that there are a lot of you out there today that just don't feel like you're good enough to come to God. And don't feel like, you just feel like he's so much better and so much higher than you that you, you, can't, you can't reach him. And I just want to tear down those walls. And I just want to remind you that, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. He's hearing you. He's, he's loving you. He's there for you. That's great. So go ahead. Find two or three or four people sitting next to you. Turn to them. Pray for the next three or four minutes. And then the band will bring us back together.